Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. And good morning to those of you at home who are watching this uh, later on today at this lovely Easter Day service. Please stand for the beating. <laughs> Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to seek the forgiveness of our sins, and to pray for the needs of the world, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths will proclaim your praise. Let us worship the Lord. All praise to his name. The first hymn this morning is hymn number 271. Jesus Christ is risen today. Hallelujah. <coughs> Grace going before us, 
you put into our minds good desires, so by your continual help you may bring them to good effect. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Our first reading this morning is from Acts chapter 10, verses 34 to 43. Then Peter began to speak, I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout the province of Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism of that John priest, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with him. We are witnesses to everything he did, in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a cross, but God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The choir is now going to sing an Easter anthem.
Our second reading this morning is from John chapter 20, verse 1 to 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying, and now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in our leg, Rabona, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and to your Father, to my God and to your God. May Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them, that he had said these things to her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. We now stand and sing our next hymn, hymn number 252. Alleluia, alleluia. Give thanks to the risen Lord. <laughs>
Easter morning as we gather to celebrate the resurrection of your Son, our Saviour. We thank you for the empty tomb. We thank you, Father, for all that he did and achieved for us on Good Friday. And Father, now as I come to speak, I'd ask that you would put your words on my lips and our hearts would be open to hear. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Now, uh, can I just say thank you to the choir and Trevor for, for the wonderful piece uh, that they prepared for this morning and uh, bring us closer uh, to, to Jesus uh, in, in the words of that hymn. And uh, thanks to Ronnie for, for reading. And I think uh, it was Ronnie many, many years ago that said to me about being in another country where uh, the question, when is Easter, um, uh, which is a question that is often asked of <coughs> clergy, when's Easter this year? Uh, he, was, he drew to my attention the fact, because I think he was in Cyprus, that you can, you can literally celebrate Easter twice in the year uh, if you are here in Northern Ireland and then you head off uh, on a holiday uh, to the Lake of Cyprus. And, and that's, that's the strange thing. When is Easter? Well, you can actually celebrate it twice in 2024. You can celebrate it today, the 31st of March, or if you go to Cyprus for your holidays on the bank holiday in May, uh, my checking on Google this morning said Easter day in Cyprus is the 5th of May. And uh, that all goes back hundreds of years to 325 uh, BC when the Orthodox churches in the East decided they were going to follow one calendar and the churches in the West decided that, now I've written it down here, uh, Easter will be on the first Sunday after the first full moon after the vernal equinox and uh, I don't really know quite what that means but I know it means that Easter changes every year and uh, but and to, it's interesting to think that Easter changes every year. That is a question that is asked of me, as I said. And I would like us to think though, about it in, in this way. Um, when we look at that Bible reading from John's Gospel, and not so much um, when is Easter in terms of a factual a sense, it is the 31st of, of March this year. But when is Easter in your heart and my heart? And uh, when, and I think this passage helps us because you have Peter, John, and Mary, and you can see when Easter comes uh, to, to them. And uh, I would like us just to have a wee look at that reading and, um, and see if we can see when does Easter come for. Peter and John and Mary, and then ask the questions of ourselves. When's Easter? When's Easter for me? Uh, when was Easter for me? Now, if you look back at that reading, it says, on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved and said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. So that's the, that's the uh, first, Mary has come to the tomb and she sees that it's empty. And do you know, if you look at it and you read it, what it would appear is that for Mary, all that she sees is that uh, his body is, is not there. And so in a very real sense, Easter has not come for Mary. Uh, she just thinks the body's not there. And it, it is helpful because it tells us, um, the, and, that, and that is a helpful thing because if you think about it, um, there are many people who say, well, the empty tomb doesn't literally prove anything. And uh, we as people like to prove things, don't we? We like the evidence and we like to say the evidence leads to that conclusion. And um, an empty tomb doesn't necessarily mean uh, that he is risen from the dead. So at that point, uh, for Mary, uh, it's, it's not, uh, Easter hasn't come. Uh, you know, and, and the empty tomb wasn't enough 
but on its own, it's, I mean, the first thought that has come to her mind, I am sure, is who has taken the, the body? You see, Easter comes, uh, I believe, to each of us, uh, and it comes to each of us by faith alone. Uh, and when she saw that empty tomb, Easter hadn't yet come to her. So as we read the story, we hear that she ran then to tell the, the disciples, and uh, they in turn raced back to see the tomb uh, and see for themselves. And everything was just as Mary had told them. They find it exactly the way she had described it to them. And the body has gone. And then we read in verse 9, they still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. So verse 9 tells us, um, tells us just like Mary, uh, for Peter and for John, Easter hasn't arrived just yet. And, uh, and that's, that's, that's an incredible incredible thing on this morning as we read through the actual account and if we read a little bit further on now mary stood outside the tomb crying as she wept she bent over and looked into the tomb and she saw two angels in white seated where jesus's body had been one at the head and the other at the foot they asked her woman why are you crying they have taken my lord away and she said and i don't know where they have put him at this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. Isn't that incredible too? Um, there you have Mary, and there are two angels, uh, and they're talking to her. And if you actually look in Luke's Gospel, you'll see that there's a little bit more information about that encounter. Uh, it says, the angels say to her, why do you seek the living among the dead? He isn't here, but he is risen. Remember what he told you when he was still in Galilee, saying that the Son of Man must be delivered up into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and on the third day be, be risen again, rise again. Do you know, isn't it incredible? Mary has heard from these two angels that he's risen, but she's not convinced. There's nothing... Um, in the passage to suggest that even with the testimony of two angels that she's convinced and um, so again she's not and she has not experienced the joy of Easter. The empty tomb didn't prove it to her, the testimony of the angels didn't prove it to her and uh, so when you ask the question when is Easter for Mary it hasn't come yet. Uh, and you can even have the testimony of angels, but you don't know the joy of Easter in your heart. And you know, when I think about that, then I think about um, church, and I think about all the angels that are in church on a Sunday morning, and I'm thinking some of us uh, may have known and know Jesus in our hearts, and, but you know what? Our testimony to those others doesn't necessarily mean that they will follow Jesus. Uh, the faith of our friends or our parents or our siblings or our parents uh, or our grandparents um, isn't enough for us to meet the, the risen Jesus for ourselves. Just like the angel's testimony wasn't enough for Mary. You can know about Jesus through others, but do you know Jesus for yourself? That is the question that the empty tomb, I think, poses for each of us. And that's a very impersonal question. That's a personal, have you had a personal encounter with Jesus? That's exactly what John tells us happened to Mary. And it's an incredibly well-known passage that Ronnie read for us. Those beautiful, beautiful words. Mary turns and sees whom she thinks is a gardener standing behind her. And he asked her, woman, why are you weeping? Why are you, what, who are you looking for? And she says, sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. So she still believes the body's been stolen or taken. And uh, so she hasn't encountered the truth of Easter. And then Jesus uh, says to her, Mary, and Mary exclaims, Rabboni, uh, which means teacher. 
and uh, and she seeks to to embrace him and there is the answer to the question when will Easter come <coughs> this year for Mary when did Easter come for Mary it came when she recognized his voice when she recognized the words on his uh, voice when he re when she recognized you know that you know and the Bible is is full of stories of people who have recognized the call of God who've recognized the 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 word of God spoken to them it starts one the one is of course Abraham and then you have Moses and you have Samuel you have Jeremiah you have Mary uh, as in the mother of Jesus uh, you have Joseph you have Peter you have Andrew you have James you have John uh, and uh, there you find uh, that they have recognized the word they've recognized the voice of God and you know this is a wonderful encounter because if you think about it it was literally the words of Jesus and um, do you know we are all unique and wonderfully made and fearfully made the scripture says each one of us is unique and unique person and God calls each one of us by name just as he called Mary and uh, God's voice she hears the voice and she responds and that's when Easter happens for her when she knows about the joy of the resurrection and you know um, it's, it is amazing she, she doesn't recognize him by sight uh, and we hear that in the story but when we when uh, uh, she hears his voice uh, she recognizes the resurrected Jesus by the words that he spoke uh, because she is familiar with Jesus she has walked with Jesus as and and she recognizes his voice the power of Jesus's resurrection from the dead the power that we celebrate today the forgiveness of sins the hope of eternal life was hers never never to be taken away she was in a living relationship with Christ now so back to the perennial question when does Easter come uh, uh, this year well Easter will come when Jesus calls you by name and you hear his voice and you respond with a heart open to hear him when you respond in in faith and that statement I think also begs the question has Easter come for you and, uh, and if you find the answer to that question challenging I think listen to a wonderful story of John Wesley because I think uh, we sometimes say uh, when we uh, when I ask that question uh, do you know Jesus is he is he in your heart have you opened your heart to him has Easter come to you you know sometimes uh, people immediately close down uh, and uh, and it's so sad because Jesus wants to walk alongside us within life Jesus wants to guide us Jesus wants to be our friend Jesus wants to take away the sins uh, that we have committed and bring us in right relationship with God our Father and enable us to love our neighbor listen to how it happened for John Wesley John Wesley uh, the story of John Wesley coming to Jesus happened on the 24th of May, 1738. Now that's a very long time ago, isn't it? He opened the Bible at five in the morning and he came across these words. There are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that even ye should partakers of the divine nature. He read similar words in, in other places. That evening, though, he went to a meeting. He didn't want to go to the meeting. And someone read uh, from uh, a, a preface to the epistle to the Romans uh, written by Luther. And then at 8.45, something happened to John Wesley. He says, while he was describing, while he was describing the change which God works in the heart through faith in Christ, I felt my heart strangely warmed. I felt I did trust in Christ, Christ alone for salvation. And an assurance was given me that he had taken away my sins, even mine, and saved me from the law of sin and death. That's a very short, short explanation, isn't it? I felt my heart strangely warmed. Incredibly famous words. And I love that short explanation of somebody coming to Christ, particularly someone who we know had such a huge impact on uh, Christianity uh, and drew people into to be disciples of Christ. 
For in it you can see that no one ever responded to God's call without some reservation. Wesley was reluctant to go to that meeting. And no one ever comprehends fully the mystery of God's holiness. We're on a journey. And uh, Wesley understood that. I felt my heart strangely worn. And you know, I know from talking to people, uh, maybe they, they, they come to church uh, regularly, and, I, and people tell me that when you go from church, you feel uh, better in yourself, and uh, your heart is one. It's as simple as that. Relating to the story of Jesus, learning about Jesus, uh, hearing about Jesus, letting him into your life. And I, I believe that we're all a work in progress. None of us is uh, obviously perfect, but the good news is that in the wee small hours of that Easter morning that we just read about, Jesus spoke to Mary and she heard the voice and she responded in faith and that was enough. That's all, that's all that he asks of us. Hear his voice, respond in faith. Let the miracle of Easter into your heart as it went into her heart, the reality, and let your life begin that wonderful journey of change. Or if you're on that journey, let that change continue uh, in your life. Uh, don't put up the blockages that stop Jesus working in and through you. The question today, has Easter come for you? And uh, it can be as simple as, I felt my heart strangely warmed. I felt I did trust in Christ. Christ alone for salvation. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for these wonderful encounters that we read in the Gospels. And we know that in the next coming Sundays, we are going to read more and more. We thank you today for these ones and help us as we reflect upon them. Either commit ourselves to Jesus for the first time or recommit ourselves on this Easter morning to following him, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Um, and now, um, let's, if you turn to your order of service, uh, I, I put in there in a very Anglican way, a way for, it, any, for all of us to share together in, on this Sunday morning, uh, committing ourselves once again uh, to, to Jesus. It's uh, the opportunity to renew your baptismal vows. And, uh, and in the history of the church, Easter Day has often been a point where we do just that. We say, we believe in Jesus. He is the Son of God. He did die for me and for you. Let's stand together as we renew our baptismal vows. As we celebrate again the death and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, we remember that through his saving acts we have died and have been buried with him in baptism so that we might rise with him to a new life within the family of his church. We now meet to renew the promises made in our baptism, to affirm our allegiance to Christ and our rejection of all that is evil. Do you renew and affirm the promises made when you were baptised? I, I do. do. Do you turn to faith in Christ? I, I do. do. Do you then renounce all evil? I do by God's help. Will you obey and serve Christ? I will by God's help. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, creator of heaven and earth? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed the world? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Those who are baptised are called to worship and serve God. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? With the help of God, I will. Will you persevere in resisting evil? And whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. With the help of God, I will. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? With the help of God, I will. Will you seek and serve Christ in all people, loving your neighbour as yourself? With the help of God, I will. 
Will you acknowledge Christ's authority over human society by prayer for the world and its leaders, by defending the weak and by seeking peace and justice? With the help of God, I will. Almighty God, you have given us the will to do all these things. Give us the courage and strength to achieve them. To the honour and glory of your name and the good of your church and people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May Christ dwell in your hearts through faith, that you may be rooted and grounded in love, and bring forth the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining in that affirmation of our faith. A truly Easter thing for each of us to do. And as in the next number of weeks, as we celebrate Easter uh, on the Sunday coming, uh, we will have a baptism next Sunday where a young couple will make promises on behalf of their infant child. And then on two Sundays after that, we'll have confirmation where seven young people from our congregation will affirm their faith in Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God uh, for that. And let's sing now uh, of, of our Lord and Saviour in the words of the hymn um, 263. Crown him with many crowns. Pray that the Holy Spirit may guide and strengthen us 
in mission and service, praying that day by day we may grow in love for you and our brothers and sisters in Christ. <coughs> Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And mighty God, we pray for the leaders of the nations of the world that they may give priority to those with greatest need in the distribution of the world's resources. We especially pray on this special day for peace in the world and for countries where there is war and conflict. We remember today those in Ukraine. We remember those in uh, Israel. We remember those in the, the lands of uh, the Palestine. And, uh, and we remember the neighboring states uh, in the, the Middle East. And we pray particularly for the peace of Jerusalem where Muslim, Christian and Jew uh, worship in their respective uh, sites. And Father, as we pray, we ask that you would guide those uh, who are leaders in our world uh, to seek resolution to the very difficult and complex uh, situations that exist across the globe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father God, at this joyful Easter time, we pray for families and friends, especially those joining us during the Easter holidays. Uh, we thank you for the joy of sending and receiving cards and, and gifts and messages of love. Thank you for all the ways that we communicate now one with another, uh, particularly one of those which bring loved ones together when we are separated by great distance. And we remember those who aren't with us today, uh, but are uh, maybe in England or Scotland or Wales or further uh, across the world. Uh, and we remember them and we remember them with love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Creator God, we pray for those who are in need and ask you to look with pity on those who suffer. We pray for the brokenhearted, for the sick, for the lonely, that your presence would comfort them in the time of need. We especially pray for all those within our parish who have asked for our prayers. And so in the quietness of our hearts, let's bring them before God today, remembering in particular those who are in hospital, or those who are in nursing homes or residential homes, or those who are at home uh, but due to ill health cannot get out and away. And so we remember them at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And merciful God, we remember those who have died throughout this year and pray that the promise of new life won, by, won for us by the resurrection of your Son will bring comfort to those who mourn. And we do remember that in every day and in every week there is an anniversary of the death of a loved one within our church family. And so on this Easter day when we celebrate the resurrection we thank you for that hope as we remember those that have gone before us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And faithful God, as we go out into the world, we pray that we may reflect your love in our families, in our church, and in our community, so that the world can witness that we are followers of Jesus and draw others into his loving care. And in a moment of quietness, uh, let's just bring before God our own particular situations, asking God to help us be uh, his life. Uh, and light in the world, that we might share the resurrected Jesus in the places we are called to walk. Merciful Father, merciful, merciful Father, Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> Uh, as we draw the service to a close, uh, we do so with our 
um, final hymn, which is also our offering hymn. And I can I just say that when I was praying uh, in the prayers there, I was remembering Ismay, our church warden, who's not with us today. I had asked you to pray for her in the week ahead, that she would get back to, to full strength. And thanks to, to Robert, who has uh, Man, the bishop, so to speak, uh, through Holy Week and, and today. Let's sing together. Thine be the glory. Amen. Amen.